हेलो फ्रेंड्स दिस इज शो मैन फ्रॉम ऑयल एंड गैस फील्ड क्वालिटी कंट्रोल टुडे आई विल बी हाईलाइटिंग ए इम्पॉर्टेंट न्यू प्रोसेस व्हिच इज पोस्ट ट्वेल्व हीट ट्रीटमेंट एंड आई विल बी फोकसिंग बेसिकली ऑन द पोस्ट ट्वेल्व हीट ट्रीटमेंट फॉर वेल्डिंग व्हिच इज ऑल्सो टर्म्ड एज स्ट्रेस रिलीविंग आफ्टर द वेल्डिंग सो सम इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन or some important queries which is coming in our mind with this name what is post weld heat treatment the full form of pwht is post weld heat treatment it is a control process that involves reheating of the metal below its lower critical transformation temperature following a welding process the material is then held at the elevated temperature for a predetermined period of time to alleviate residual stresses increase the strength increase and de- increase or decrease hardness and reduce the risk of cracking by microstructural changes an array of heating processes can be used to carry out post weld heat treatment what is the difference between pwht and post heating pwht and post heating or hydrogen bake out it's sometimes referred to as two different things with different purpose when post heating of the weld only heat the weldment up to 250 to 300 degree centigrade for pwht you heat it up to 550 and 740 depending on the alloy how many times pwht can be done the pwht total times and temperatures may be applied in one heating cycle pwht and stress relieving for welds what is the difference why the name is different the existing methods of relieving residual stresses from the welds are mechanical heat and electromagnetic the mechanical method may be performed by hammering or vibration the heating method consists of heating the whole welded piece or each weld one by one post weld heat treatment pwht is also called as stress relief as stress relief is a method of reducing or relieving and redistributing the residual stresses in the material that have been introduced by welding the need of post weld heat treatment is mostly due to the residual stresses and microstructural changes that occur after the welding has been completed during the welding process a high temperature gradient is experienced between the weld metal and the parent material as the weld cools residual stress is formed is pwst required for carbon steel post weld heat treatment of carbon steel must be performed after each welding in order to ensure the material strength of the part is retained the exact criteria of pwht of carbon steel are mentioned in asmi bpvc code boiler and pressure vessel code pwht ensures the reduction of residual stresses controlling material hardness and enhancement of the mechanical strength pwht of carbon manganese steels is typically carried out at approximately 600 degree centigrade for 1 hour per 25 mm of thickness is pwst required for stainless steel pwst for stainless steel is usually not required however to increase the corrosion resistance or residual stress corrosion cracking susceptibility stainless steel pwst may be used depending on the service conditions encountered is welding allowed after pwst strictly in accordance with governing code which specify the need for pwst no welding is allowed after pwst else pwst will need to be repeated relieve any residual stresses that may have been introduced by the new welds what is the minimum thickness for pwst as per b31.3 The ASME B31.3 PWST requirement for piping material are established in the clause 
331.1.1 along with the table 331.1.1, 1.2 and 1.3. Ask me B31.3 2014 comes to be more stringent, less than 5 mm PWST is required. More than 25 mm PWST can be exempted if preheat is conducted. Also, as per new ASME B31.3 2016 edition, for P number 1, PWST can be exempted if a preheat of 95 degree centigrade or 200 degree Fahrenheit is applied prior to welding or any nominal material thickness greater than 25 mm 1 inch. Multiple layer welds are used when the nominal material thickness greater than 5 mm or 3 3 by 16 inch 3 by 16 inch what are the disadvantages of post weld heat treatment excessive holding times or temperatures for stress relieving pwst can reduce the strength of the material moreover tampering treatments can also reduce the strengths of the quenched and tempered material thus temperature and time must be well controlled to prevent loss of strength. How to calculate PWST temperature? PWST temperature is not calculated. The range of PWST temperature is mentioned in the tabular format in the governing codes. So the PWST temperature is selected from the tables of governing code. For example, table 331.1.1 of ASME B31.3 for process piping system. Preparation and attachment of thermocouple for PWST. After performing visual inspection and removing surface defects and temporary tack wells, an adequate number of thermocouples based on the diameter of the pipe shall be, shall be attached to the pipe directly and equally spaced location along the periphery of the pipe joints. The minimum number of thermocouples attached per joint shall be 1 for up to 3 inch diameter, 2 for 6 inch diameter, 3 for up to 10 inch and 4 up to 12 inch diameter and above. However, the required minimum number of thermocouples to be attached can be increased if it is found extremely necessary. The thermocouple shall be placed on the joint and in firm contract with the pipe as near as possible to the weld area. Thermocouple should be directly tack welded to the joint or heating band jointly provided that they have a tail of the same material and approved filler wear or electrode not larger than 2.5 mm in diameter is used for the tack welding. In order to avoid incorrect temperature reading and due to direct radiation of thermocouples, it shall be protected by ceramic fiber blanketed or any other suitable insulation material. Heating resistance element shall be laid over the attached thermocouple throughout the heating band and shall be insulated. Insulating material shall be mineral wool or glass wool which can overcome the temperature employed. The minimum insulation thickness shall be 50 mm to hold the insulation material in position where mesh shall be wrapped around and tied or tied by other suitable means. The post weld heat treatment temperature and time and its heating and cooling rates shall be recorded automatically and prevent the actual temperature of the weld area. Each thermocouple shall be connected to the controlling and recording instrument for each treated joint. The heating temperature above 300 degree centigrade shall be recorded and the heating and cooling shall not be more than specified in recorded WPS and standards but in no case more than 200 degree centigrade per hour and the difference between the temperature measured by the various thermocouple shall be within the range specified. The heat treatment soaking temperature and holding time shall be specified in the related welding procedure specification. For easy reference, the values of different types of steel are given in ASME B31.3. 
if it is your governing code. The cooling down to 300 degree centigrade shall be controlled. Cool. Below that, the cooling down to ambient temperature shall take place under insulation coating without controlling. You can see as per the table, we have an example of ASME A106 grade B. The heating range is maximum 200 degree centigrade per hour. Holding temperature is 600 to 620 degree centigrade. Holding time is minimum one hour. Cooling rate 200 degree centigrade per hour. This is a sample table for your easy understanding. PWHT method, the local post weld heat treatment of the welded joint on the pipes shall be carried out by electrical resistance method and after the completion of all welding and repairing operation. The resistance heater is electrically and thermally self-insulated and is built to size for each individual pipes. The applied voltage across the coils are either 220 degree or 380 volts AC depending on the power requirements. The power controlling panel of post weld heat treatment is composed of a temperature controller indicator and recorder of digital type, a potentiometer device which controls the percentage of the power input of the coil, a switch on off indicator light input and output terminal for power and thermocouple connection, electrical power contactors of the proper rate. Each panel will supply a single heating station and therefore for each heating operation one panel will be needed. Heating and cooling rate are adjusted by the manual selection of percentage of power input by means of potentiometer. Here is a typical setup for post oil heat treatment where the main heat treatment unit and the heating blanket from there a lot of thermocouple wires are coming as per the requirement and it is getting connected to the heat treatment unit. There is a recorder cable and in the heat treatment unit you can see the chart is attached. Heating, soaking or cooling that are received from the workpiece will be recorded on the chart installed in the heat treatment unit. In some cases the recorder is a separate unit. Here are the integral parts or accessories or equipments uh, required for PWST. Flexible ceramic pad heater. You can see different model and there is a capacity that means 2.7 kilowatt, 60 volt 2.7 kilowatt. We should be purchasing as per our requirement. These are some cable insulated heater distribution copper cable, thermocouple sockets, panel mounted thermocouple plug, brass connector socket to connect the cables together, brass connector socket female cam lock. So different types of models for your easy reference. Flexible ceramic pad or heater, you can see some of them. 4 way splitter cable, some accessories. I told you that the chart recorder sometimes it is a, a integral part of the heating unit or sometimes it can be externally mounted. So it is a 12 point sharp chart recorder. This is a digital controller where you can get the reading of the heats and what is happening in the machine. This is a typical setup. Right side you can see some photos of the weld, ongoing post weld heat, heat treatment and some of them already completed heat treatment. You can see the impressions of heat on the material and the weld. Benefits of PWHT for metals, improving the ductility of the material, it reduces the instances of brittle fractures, tampered metal, improves and in some cases reduces the metal's hardness, improve metallurgical properties, the prevention of cracking caused by hydrogen by its removal. Things to consider during PWHT. Before applying for the detailed PWHT requirements, an exemption, satisfactory welding procedure qualification and welding procedure specification to be used shall be performed in accordance with 
all the essential variables of asthma section 9 including conditions and post oil treatment and including other restrictions listed below. While carrying out local post oil heat treatment, the technique of application of heat must ensure uniform temperature attainment at all points of the portion being heat treated. Care shall be taken to ensure that the width of the heat band on either side of the weld edge shall not be less than 4 times the pipe thickness or 2 inch whichever is greater. Throughout the cycle of post oil heat treatment, the portion outside the heating band shall be suitably wrapped under the insulation so as to avoid any harmful temperature gradient as at the exposed surface of the pipe. For this purpose, the temperature at the exposed surface of the pipe should not be allowed exceed 400 degrees centigrade. The valves, instruments and any other special items with welding end shall be protected because of the risk of damage during the post oil heat treatment. No welding shall be performed after PWST. Automatic temperature recorders that have been suitably calibrated shall be employed. The calibration chart of each recorder shall be submitted to the owner prior to starting the heat treatment operation and his approval shall be obtained. Recording equipment shall be calibrated at least once in every 12 months. Also, equipment potentiometer which is used for calibration of recorders should also be supported by a related certificate. PWHT operations shall be performed only by trained personnel having a similar experience and approved by the owner. During PWHT joints shall be protected from rain and wind by adequate rain cover and windshield. Hardness tests after PWHT shall be performed to determine if heat treatment has been performed effectively. Normally for carbon steel, maximum Brinell hardness is 200 HP. Electrical technicians shall work with proper safety wear such as rubber gloves, shoes, etc. An only certified electrician will work. Joints after PWST shall be well, cord well cordoned with red tape and red light and danger display to avoid unknown person coming in contact with the high voltage electrical connections. So that's all for post weld heat treatment. Summary we can say whether or not a material should undergo PWHD depends on a number of factors including things like its alloying system or whether it's been submit, subject to heat treatment previously. Certain materials can actually be damaged by PWHD while others almost always require it. In general, the higher the carbon content of a material, the more likely it needs to be PWHD after welding activities has been conducted. In general, the higher the carbon content of a material, the more likely it needs PWHD after welding activities have been conducted. Similarly, the higher the alloy content and cross-sectional thickness, the more likely the material is to need PWST. If you have any questions, please put me in the comment. I will be more happy to reply it. If you like my teaching, please share and subscribe and click the like button to inspire me more. Thank you. Signing off. Showman.